presentation and there, well, I want Dee to tell you about it. So Dee, would you come up and um, just present to us Saskatoon Pregnancy Options Centre. Thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be here this morning and what wonderful singing. How Great Thou Art is one of my favourite hymns and we had it at our wedding 25 years ago, so it's very special to me. <laughs> so it's my turn for I Remember When and my first I Remember When was August 17th last year when I flew into Saskatoon for the very first time. And flying over the city, I remember thinking, wow, it's true, it's very flat. <laughs> People said to me, Dee, when you arrive, you'll just have a sense of how flat it is. It was dark, it was the evening, and my son and I were on the plane. My husband and my daughter were already here. They'd come in the June. I had to stay a bit longer in England to sell our house, which took forever to sell. Um, but we managed to sell it the day that we flew out of the country. And so my son Judah and I were looking out of the window at the lights of the city. And I remember thinking, this is my new home. We had never set foot in Saskatoon before. We'd never been to Saskatchewan before. <laughs> I'd only ever once been to Toronto. That was the only place in Canada that I had been. My husband had lived in Newfoundland and Labrador as a child. So he had memories. His first memories were all here in Canada, but on the east side. So... For us, it was very different, and it was my first time ever having a one-way ticket anywhere. <laughs> and it felt exciting and scary. But I must say, a year later, this now feels very much like home. And we love the fact that we have life here. But it wasn't easy in some ways. In many ways, it was quite straightforward. But we had to start from scratch, building a new life, we had no family here, no savings anymore because that got swallowed up in the house sale. We were renting a home. Um, but thankfully, in starting from scratch, we had a fantastic community, group of people and a wonderful city that embraced us and helped us to call this place home that gave us great jobs to come to, gave us grandparents for my kids now. Uh, we have Grandpa Chuck in our church who just loves on my kids and really helps them. Um, my kids are not as small. So my youngest is uh, 12, Judah, um, and then a 17-year-old, Imani. And then we have a daughter still in England who's 20, Taya. She's at university there. So we miss her very, very much. But yes, we have grandparents for our kids, wonderful friends for us. And um, as you heard already, John is the lead pastor of Circle Drive Alliance Church. So the Alliance Churches um, are our new church families, and we love it. Um, and then, obviously, um, also I'm in a new role as the director of the Saskatoon Pregnancy Options. And we've just changed our name, actually, so it's longer. <laughs> it's now the Saskatoon Pregnancy Options and Support Centre. So you might have known us before as Real Choices for Women and Families. That was a previous name that we had. And before that, it was the Crisis Pregnancy Line. Um, it was a phone line back from the 1990s. And so, yes, we have moved. Um, we have a new location just off 11th Street, just around the corner from here, actually, not too far at all. So if you come um, along Circle Drive and then off at Circle and 11th, um, and then you turn onto Dudley Street, and we're just along there. So not too far at all. But we've found you know, both our places of work as just full of people who love Jesus and who love people. And that's been really important to both of us. But for me, I've really had, a, I guess, a, an experience not unlike many people who moved to this country, um, adjusting to a new continent, new culture, all of that's been interesting. And yes, we do love the snow. <laughs> but I'm just so grateful that the language hasn't been a big barrier. Apart from my English words, I keep saying, I went to the store to ask for windscreen wash. And someone said, well, you need the computer department. And what's wrong with your computer screen? I'm like, no, it's for my car windshield wash. That's what I was wanting. So those kind of things do get a bit um, interesting and funny. But I often think of the 
the people who move to this country who don't have the same language, who don't speak English, and how they must struggle. And I really have empathy for them, especially those who have small children or who are pregnant and just need that support and often don't get that support that we've been so blessed to have. And in my center, we have many, many clients who are in that situation, many clients who have moved to this country and are either partway along their pregnancy or have small children or have just found out unexpectedly that they're pregnant and just have no support network. And so we've been able to, um, and we continue to support them, which is such a blessing to do so. In a moment, we'll play a video and you'll get to meet one of those families um, who moved here from India. Um, and, you know, we've been able to become family to them that they didn't have. Um, and they actually had twins. So um, that was quite a challenge for them. But I'll let you watch it in a moment. Not quite yet, though, because I've got another I remember when. I've got another one. And my other I remember when was another time around 2009. And I was pregnant with our son, Judah. And I was driving not far from our house in England. And I had my two young girls in the back talking away. My husband was next to me talking away. The radio was on, there was music blaring, and before I knew it, I had driven into the car in front of me. And I remember thinking, it was just too noisy. I couldn't concentrate on what I was doing. And I didn't intend to drive into the car in front of me, but it happened before I knew it, because all the noise made me struggle to focus on where I was going. What I had needed to do in that moment was reduce the noise, maybe turn the radio off, let my mind focus on my journey, on my destination. And again, people come to our center metaphorically in a similar situation. They've been going about their life and suddenly they found themselves unexpectedly pregnant. And then all the noise around them, all the chatter, all the opinions, all of the Google searches, all of the research has caused them to struggle with a decision of what to do. So we can provide a space for them to come and reduce that noise so they don't potentially end up having that car crash. Needing the space to re reduce the noise, to spend time with someone who's got the time to spend with them and is not going to rush them through, will help them to navigate the journey ahead. And every single day we come across people in that situation. And our society, as we all know, and we heard before, has been through a huge shift. And the children who are growing up now are in information overload. There is so much out there and they can often absorb everything as being factual and being truth, when actually many of it is opinion based. And it's difficult for our children often to wade through what's factual, what's reality, and what's somebody's opinion. Um, and to be able to teach children and young people to really do some really good research and find out with some reputable places and talk to people who care about them is really important. So again, that's something else that we can do at our center. We've been working hard over this last season since I've been there um, as well to really educate people about what we do because there can be so many misunderstandings, so many opinions, so much noise in the, in the media. We all love the media, don't we? <laughs> so many, um, you know, especially right now when it's such a polarizing society and people are either here or they're there and they're often shouting at each other. But to actually have a place where people can feel cared for, that they can receive really up-to-date factual information and loving, a loving approach without judgment or pressure, we found is so important. And that's why our core values have always been and continue to be that we embrace people, we educate people, and then we empower them, which makes such a difference. So I'm going to now show you the video. And this is a video that we made recently of some just three client stories of three different situations of people that come across our center every day. So I'll let you have a look at this. 
So watching that gives you a good idea of, I guess, the people's stories. And stories are powerful, aren't they? Like we heard so many wonderful stories this morning already. And you know, we all have our story. And when we've been able to come through a situation that would be quite difficult and know that we've had support and that God's seen us through some tough times, then that's a powerful story that we can take and help other people with. And of course, in our center that... You know, we, um, we're a Christian organization, we all are believers, and we have prayer time every day, but we accept um, all clients of all faiths, all backgrounds, without any judgment, so that they can, I guess, find a place where they'll be accepted, and we can show them the love of Jesus, which is so important. We're not a quiet center. We're growing. Um, As Frank mentioned, you know, we've grown over the years and we're continuing to do so. Um, And currently our two largest demographic groups of people are, first of all, newcomers to Canada. And then equally as large are our indigenous clients. We have many indigenous people that come and they bring such an amazing richness to our center as well. We have stories like you've heard every single day. Um, Just another story for you. There's a lady who called the center who lives out of town. She lives um, maybe an hour and a half away. And she called and she was in her 40s and had unexpectedly found out that she was pregnant again for the third time and just didn't know what to do. And so I called her every week for quite a few weeks just to see how she was, provide a place for her to, to talk, to talk through her situation, to, um, you know, check information of, you know, what happens um, maybe in our bodies even. You know, I was just talking earlier on about how complex and interesting a woman's body is that can produce life and then all the changes that happen in her body because of that. So these are, are great things to be able to talk with our clients through. <clears throat> and then she... She called the center not too long ago because she'd stopped calling. And sometimes when people stop calling and stop picking up the phone, you kind of think, oh, we don't always get that closure to know how they've gone. But she actually called the center just a couple weeks ago and said, my baby's nearly due. And just to let you know, those weekly phone calls helped me get through a time I didn't think I would be able to get through. And I thought, isn't that powerful? Something as simple as a phone call once a week. It's not hard to pick up a phone and talk to somebody. But for her, it meant she could get through that season of her life, which was incredibly difficult. Our vision as a center is that everyone within reach of our center that has need of our services will be able to get to us, either in person or virtually. We do a lot since COVID online. Um, Some clients, that's opened up opportunities for them who might live further away, like this one lady I've just talked about. Um, and other people who really struggle to get out of the house or if they've got many kids at home and they can't always manage to get um, through on public transport, we can um, meet with them virtually, which is really a fantastic opportunity that COVID, even though it had lots of challenges, it's brought us some great opportunities. And we're able to resource parents who would find the economic challenge of being a parent as one of their biggest challenges. And so we have generous donations from individuals and organizations all the time. Um, And just in case you're wondering how many items we ever give out, in the last 12 months, we've given out 4,059 different boutique items. That could range from diapers to wipes to baby shampoo, Um, pre-used baby sleepers and clothes and all sorts of different things. Um, And people make use of our boutique very, very regularly. One of our programs that we do that you heard um, from the couple that had their twins, um, we call it Earn While You Learn. And so clients would come, they'd do a video-based classes um, that would teach them parenting skills and talk about all the different stages of pregnancy. And then they would earn points, which we call baby books. And then they can spend those baby books in the boutique with all of our brand new items. Um, And so that's a way that they can um, resource themselves practically as well as with education. 
And then we have a second boutique, which is all our pre-used items that people donate to us, and they can help themselves with as much as they want. And we even receive cribs and strollers and all sorts of things that our parents gladly, gladly receive. But this current political climate isn't always our friend. In many situations, it's not our friend. But in the work that we do, it can often be seen as um, not, that, not our friend. And so, you know, we've had advice from good-meaning, well-meaning people to say, you know, this season at the moment, especially for centres that deal with what people can consider crisis pregnancies or unexpected pregnancies, these kind of centres are really under fire from a lot of political arenas. And so some really sound advice was just get your head down and survive this season. <clears throat> this isn't a season to thrive, it's one to survive. And as I prayed, and as we as a team prayed more and more, I just had this conviction that we had to dare to imagine for good things, that we wouldn't just survive this current storm, this current season of pressure and all that goes with that, but that actually we could maybe step out and continue to grow even. And so this last year, we've been working hard to make sure that our vision is continuing. And Ephesians 3 verse 20 has been my favorite scripture within this season, which has been, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. <clears throat> that doesn't say only in some seasons. That doesn't say, oh yeah, no, when the political arena isn't your friend. It doesn't say that at all. It says it's according to God's power that's at work through us. And so we've continued to be diligent with the people that call us and walk through our doors every day. We've been diligent with every donation that's been given to us. We continue that we've never and still don't receive government funding. Everything that we do, all the staff that we pay, is all through generosity of people who believe in the work that we do. And what can be seen as fruit is incredible. Lives like we've seen on the screen, lives like the lady that I just talked to you about. But we also have some great vision for our future as well. And we're daring to imagine. Sometimes to imagine for the future isn't an easy thing to do, is it? And we have to dare ourselves and challenge ourselves to imagine for good things when fear can be crouching at our door. And that's often something that we've had to do. We've dared ourselves to imagine. But we have some goals and some things, like many organizations, that we'd like to be able to accomplish maybe in the next year or so. And we'd really love to continue doing what we do, but to continue to grow. And so this 12 months that we're going through right now, um, we are affiliated to Pregnancy Care Canada, who is our umbrella organization. And Pregnancy Care Canada, they support over 80 centers right across Canada from coast to coast and all in between. And our centers, you know, we receive training through them and they're fantastic supporting us. But they do an accreditation process for centres that want to, um, I guess, show exemplary care to people. And so we decided um, just a few months ago that we would start that accreditation process. It's a 12-month process. It's thorough. It's in-depth. It's very, very difficult at times. Um, but we are two months into that process. And so basically, every month we're going through a different section of our organization, whether it be how we care for the clients or whether it be our policies and procedures or whether it be how we deal with our staffing and HR or how we um, deal with health and safety, many different areas. And so at the end of that, once we receive our accreditation, that will give us even more credibility within the community, which is what we really desire. We have a really good reputation that's been over many, many years, but we would love to continue to deepen that, to make sure that we're credible. We also want to be a resource to more churches. And last week, we had the privilege of hosting a pastors and church leaders brunch at our center. 
just to to let um, churches in our area know that we're here for them and we have lots of resource that can help to support people within the churches. I know my church, um, Circle Drive Alliance, also we're working at how we can make sure that you know people who need our services can actually find our services and find the support that they need. We have, as you saw, one of the stories on the screen was a lady who had had an abortion many, many, many years ago. And that's something that we're really making sure that we continue with our po post-abortion support for people who have carried heavy burdens for sometimes decades, sometimes only just few, a few weeks before. Um, and so we're able to help them go through a healing process that they can live a life of freedom again and know that God takes their burdens. So we'd love to continue to do that and increase our post-abortion support as well. And so we have lots of imagines. Maybe imagine we could even open a second location downtown where there is even more need. Maybe we can provide a space in some of the outlying towns, like where the lady who was in her 40s that called the center is from, so that they can physically find a place close by. And thankfully, this week, we have a center, not from our center, but part of Pregnancy Care Canada, that has just opened up in Melfort, which is a huge, huge celebration for us, which means that more people can receive help where they need. But continually, we have conversations with people who maybe have never heard of us, or maybe who have, but who are keen to be part of our chain of support. And so we're so grateful for every opportunity that we have just to tell people about our center that is brimming with life, about the community that is full of people who just care and who want to step into the lives of other people. And so that's what I wanted to share with you this morning, and thank you so much for having me. Um, if you do have any questions afterwards, you're more than welcome to ask. And I've got a small table set up over there with some information on it too. So thank you very much. But let's pray. I'd like to pray for you. And I'm sure you'll join me in praying for all of the amazing people in our city. Lord Jesus, we thank you. I thank you for the opportunity that we've had this morning to remember good times and talk about how important memories are and how important our stories are. I thank you for all of the, the clients that I've been able to share stories of. Lord, would you bless them wherever they are today? And I pray for each person here within this church, those that, that are sitting here right now and those that, that come to this place every other time of the week. Lord, this is such a, a blessed place, Lord, because it's your house. And your house is your vehicle for reaching the world. And we thank you for the churches across this city. We thank you for the many, many people who work diligently and serve your people. Lord, I thank you for each pastor across this city and across this nation. And I pray that you would refresh them. When things are hard, Lord, would you be alongside them and guide them and refresh them. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to hand back to Frank. <laughs>